Hi everybody, this is Dr. Eric Corum, founder of AIM7. Welcome back to The Blueprint, where we distill cutting edge science, leadership, and life skills into simple tactics optimized for your busy lifestyle and goals. Today I'm joined by my friend Pratik Patel. Pratik is a registered sports dietitian and strength conditioning coach that's worked at the highest level in sports, including serving as the director of sports nutrition for the New York Giants. In this episode, Pratik and I do a deep dive on salt. We discuss the function of salt in the body, how much the average person needs each day, and how to regulate your intake. We also discuss how living on a fast food lifestyle can absolutely wreck your health. But before we get started, please hit that subscribe button on whichever listening platform you are listening on. As you always know, we drop a new episode, and it's an excellent way for you to support the show. But now, it's time to lean in and learn from the best. Teak, I want to talk about salt today. This is one of those things growing up, I heard like, don't take in too much salt. Don't take in too much salt. It's bad for you. It's bad for you. It's bad for you. Then as a college athlete and then later on in life, as I ate a very clean diet, as I started to really understand like what I'm supposed to be eating, people are like, you probably need to add some salt back in. So is salt bad for me? Are there risk factors that, you know, hey, if you have these comorbidities, you should really think about your salt intake. I just love to get a download from you on salt. Yeah, I think for the most part, people have a little bit of a skewed perception about salt itself. So obviously salt is sodium chloride, so NaCl. Sodium is an essential electrolyte micronutrient. We need it in the body for a variety of different processes. So when we think about when we consume sodium, it's the major extracellular cation potassium's inside the cell. So what happens is these both are very involved in fluid regulation and they follow concentration gradients. So if you have sodium on the outside of the cell, it wants to make sure that it flows outside to inside. And if you have the appropriate amount of fluid too, you could also, because of the permeability of the cell to sodium and potassium, it's gonna take water and push it inside the cell, which is a good thing. But when we think about the products that are very high in not just sodium, but salt in and of itself, We think about the things that are needed for palatability, longer shelf life, get people to want to eat them because they're tasty. And this is generally found in more ultra processed type foods. Yes. So I think there becomes an association with salt being bad because it it is found in moderate to sometimes higher quantities in these products, which aren't necessarily the greatest things to eat over time and consistently. Like packaged foods. Yeah, like packaged foods. So I think people are afraid because like, oh, you know, when you consume salt, when you have a high amount of sodium, the body's going to do what it needs to do to maintain that equilibrium with your electrolyte balance. So if there's a ton there, what it needs to do is hold on to more fluid to keep the balance between what's outside the cell, what's inside the cell. And so what happens is if you don't actually, and it's not because of a hydration thing, like athletes, oh, they'll preload with a good amount of fluid and Sodium, I mean, that's great. That's exactly what they need. It helps keep core temperature down, heart rate down, all that good stuff. But for most people, they're not thinking about hyperhydrating for increasing plasma volume purposes. It's, oh, I'm eating these foods because they're good, they're palatable, or it's what's in front of me. Mm-hmm. And then they're higher in sodium. So then the body wants to balance. So you end up excreting out and holding on to water. So it tries to excrete out sodium. It tries to hold on to water. And what happens with that is you get some vasoconstriction of your arteries so there is an influence on heart rate and, and, and blood pressure restriction does is it increases blood pressure and heart rate there you go but the issue isn't specifically because of oh you had something that had a high amount of sodium like okay those increases in heart rate and blood pressure could also come from sympathetic nervous system activation so if you're very stressed or in some type of state of arousal it could also happen if you eat something that creates a significant rise in blood glucose levels so it's not always just attributed specifically to salt because salt, sodium is a very important mineral. We need it for a lot of processes in the body. And when we're not getting enough or when it becomes diluted, the body doesn't operate the way that it needs to, especially at the cellular level. And I'm not talking about eating grams and grams of salt every single day. It's like, okay, we need to be mindful about where the salt and the sodium is actually coming from. Am I somebody that works out? Am I, am I hydrating adequately enough throughout the entire day? Because there are things that are going to increase the need for making sure you get an adequate amount of sodium. As you said, as an athlete, like, hey, Eric, you're probably eating too little or you're consuming too little. And like, oh, that's why I kind of feel sluggish. Or even maybe if you're not an athlete, but you eat a really clean diet, like whole foods, yeah. like you're cooking vegetables, whole grains, less processed food, you're eating on the perimeter of the store. Like those, like in their natural form, just don't have don't a ton. Don't have much. Yeah, and so you're missing out. 
Mm. Correct. So you're going to need it through yeah. seasoning your food. There so you even go. then, if you're a person who just can't tolerate a ton of seasoning or you're not adding grams and grams of, you know, sodium from the salt that you're consuming, you got to find it from another way, you right. know, whether it's an electrolyte product, whether it's looking at naturally salty foods uh, or things that are preserved, whether it's fermented food, whether it's pickles, jerky, th those kind of things that aren't necessarily ultra processed, but they're still whole and intact for the most part. If you are someone that's pushing to be your best at work, at home, or in your personal life, then I invite you to sign up for my weekly newsletter, Adaptation. In this newsletter, I curate actionable information and resources for high performers just like you. You can sign up now by clicking the link in the show notes or going to www.ericcorum.com. All right, now back to the show. So, okay, how many grams of salt should the average person get into each day? Sodium, let's just say sodium. So, yeah, around like about 2,400 milligrams, and they say that's equivalent to about a tablespoon of salt. Might so, be wrong, might be a teaspoon or a tablespoon, but along those 2. lines. 2.4 to three grams the most. That That's your baseline, but then you also have to take into consideration like how active you are. Are you on the go all the time? Are you a naturally heavy sweater? Because again, you're going to think about replenishing what you end up losing. And there's a variety of things that are going to influence that too. Dude, one Big Mac has a thousand milligrams. So think about this. Like you go fast food it. The Big Mac alone has a thousand milligrams. I'm willing to bet I'm going to go large fry. Here we go. <laughs> okay. So you get one, you get half, let's say close to half of your daily allowance of sodium in one fast food stop. Mm -hmm. So imagine people that are living a sedentary lifestyle, eating fast food once to twice a day. Now, like, and you've got your obese, your blood pressure's up. Maybe you got some of these comorbidities. Now sodium becomes a real problem because you're already have elevated blood pressure and now what you're doing is what you're, you're like constricting the pipes. Yeah. So this is when it could get bad. I'm sorry. I don't want to put words in your mouth, but is that, is that kind of, cause I think there's a situation here where this, this can get out of control pretty quick. Cause then you start eating all the stuff that's in the middle of the grocery store, which is what packaged food, higher sodium content. And now you end up with the recommendations that doctors are like, stop. Mm -hmm. But there's the other end of the spectrum which is probably only 20% of society that's eating super clean or eating whole foods in general, and they may need more. Mm -hmm. So where's a good, like, what's, what's the barometer? If you're just like generic recommendations to how to figure out where you should be on the, the, the continuum of sodium salt intake. Yeah. And it's tough. As you said, everybody's situation is going to be so different. I think every individual person can, you know, t take, a few seconds to think about, okay, what is my situation? Do I know, do I have any comorbidities? Mm -hmm. Am I at risk for already having hypertension or am I kind of on the stage of getting to that point? What kind of food do I normally eat? Am I somebody who exercises? Because that's something that can assist with keeping heart rate down, mm -hmm. increasing parasympathetic activity, keeping blood pressure down. These are all the things that you want to make sure that you're aware of. But I think when it comes from the medical side, what they see is somebody who already has these issues who might not be able to regulate or keep them in check. So they might go on a beta blocker to be able to assist with that. But, and then they, they, they were mentioned like, look, you have to watch your sodium intake because all these other things are happening and you might be pre-diabetic pre -diabetic or have some type two diabetes going on. Another thing that influences, you know, heart rate and blood pressure that sometimes gets misconstrued and how well are they hydrating too? Mm. And we already know if you're dehydrated, the heart has to work harder to maintain the same cardiac output at rest because you don't have as much blood volume. because you don't have as much blood volume so that's another thing to take into consideration too so i think so sodium it by it itself is not the culprit the same way you know carbohydrates by themselves are not the culprit for all all diseases it's when everything gets magnified and stacks on top of each other mm -hmm. like we have a lot of things that are going against us and we just can't necessarily point to one area it's like we need to work on a variety of different things so I want to kind of like bring out some rules of thumb here, like no more than maybe three grams a day for the average person. If you're just average person, but if you're exercising, eating clean, this may be something that you need to be adding into your food. And I know some people, they, because sodium, we didn't tell you talk about action potentials, but also action potentials for neurons. That's how you propagate an action potential. If you remember back to college or high school biology, you know, it's like going down the axon. Mm -hmm. It's like the, the, the sodium potassium pump. But like you need this. And if you don't, your brain's not going to work right. 
And so that's, there's some people that actually will like when they wake up in the morning, they'll literally drink water. They'll throw some, you know, pink Himalayan sea salt in there, squeeze a little bit of lime or lemon just for flavoring. So they're getting some of these electrolytes. You drink magnesium in the morning um, along with this stuff. So it's not as bad as we think, but if you eat a standard Western diet and you're constantly consuming processed foods, it could be a real problem. Yeah. Okay. I just think that this is one of those misunderstood things that um, if you're most of the people I hope that are listening to the show are wanting to live a cleaner lifestyle and it may be something that you need to consider adding back in. You want to talk to your doctor, talk to whoever your practitioner or health practitioner is, but don't completely avoid it, especially as we're heading into summer. Absolutely. Yeah. You don't want to end up getting terrible cramps at night or being out for a long baseball game or whatever, and you're locked up because you didn't get your sodium. <laughs> So any other recommendations around this? No, I think the main thing is don't fear it as much as a culprit by itself. Mm -hmm. It's when you stack it on top of a high ultra processed food intake, sedentary lifestyle, you know, poor circadian um, rhythm and function and already having some comorbidities. So maybe you're already overweight or obese. That's when things start becoming a little bit more of an issue. So, okay, I, I need to be aware of my sodium, but I also need to make sure I'm aware of all these other areas, too. If you learned something new today about salt and you think it may benefit someone else, please consider sharing this episode on social media or just send it to a friend. Also, give Pratik a follow on Twitter or Instagram. He is putting out amazing content daily. Thanks again for listening, and I'll catch you on the next episode.